Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to be working on a study, the image you can see here. And it's probably gonna take me a couple of hours, I think, to do any kind of justice. Uh, at least I hope I can do it some kind of justice. And uh, I'm gonna be speeding some areas up to kind of keep the video a bit shorter, but uh, I'm gonna add real-time narration. So you're going to see my thought processes um, as I'm doing it, which I think is really important for a study. Hopefully this is gonna be useful for you guys. Uh, I don't know if you know, I have a Discord. I've added the link in the description below. And you can join me if you wanna follow along with this study. Feel free to add it to the Discord and I can give you feedback or um, some amazing artists that are already in there could give you some great feedback as well. So hopefully this will be useful. Um, let's see how we get on. Okay, so like I said, this is the image I'm going to be trying to replicate to the best of my ability. Uh, apologies if I'm looking down constantly, I've got a Cintiq which I'll be working on and I've got the reference out in front of me so if you see me jumping around that's that's why. Um, so looking at this image, why did I choose it? Well it's a beautiful piece of artwork um, to begin with. It's a style that I really appreciate. It's an old painting from I believe the 1930s maybe, probably should have fact checked that. Um, and the artist's name is Mead um, Scheffler Schaeffler? I, I don't know how to say it, but um, fantastic artist. And what I really like is value grouping and colour. They're bold images, they stand out. The silhouette from the characters really stands out. So what I really like is this here, how that breaks away from that uh, background. And the same with this character here, he breaks away from that background. Um, and that's basically being achieved through uh, value structures. You can see the skin here is very dark. If I make this uh, image grayscale by um, removing saturation on the uh, vibrance, if I zoom out, it still reads really well from a distance and that's what I want to achieve with my study. I'm okay not getting details kind of correct. I'm okay things being a little bit off, like the background, I don't care about. Um, color, I don't mind getting that a little bit wrong as well. The main thing for me is establishing these value structures and just starting to think about how they've been used in the composition. The main thing I see as an issue with artists and with myself mainly, I'll do a study and it's actually quite successful in that it looks like the original, but I've gone on autopilot and I've just created it. I haven't thought about what I wanted to learn. So that's why at the very start, um, trying to work out what I want to learn and potentially areas that I might want to improve the piece, things that I don't like myself, not to say that they are necessarily um, bad, but maybe they're not to my taste, so I can change those. Uh, looking at this image, this guy's face here, I might want to bring that out a little bit more, a little bit more color maybe, um, but we'll see how that goes. The green in the background I think is fantastic, it looks really cool. A uh, couple of things, obviously this is a real oil painting. Um, you can see the reflections on the brush strokes. Obviously I'm not gonna be trying to achieve that because I'm not trying to replicate um, an oil painting. I'm just doing it as a study. And like I said, probably two hours is a good suitable time uh, to spend on this. Now this is a great time to work out what you want to achieve with your study and choose a process that works for that. So if you want to work on composition and um, accuracy in replicating a design, then just draw it. You don't need to do the painting side of it. You can just draw it. Um, and you can see how I've got my canvas set up here. The image is inside the canvas pretty close and it's the right ratio. If you're trying to replicate it, you shouldn't do that because it makes it a bit easier. You want to kind of work out by plotting out the size if you can. Um, for me, that's not really a focus. Like I said, accuracy today, not a focus. For me, it's that drama that I'm trying to create using the value structures. Um, so yeah, that's enough of me talking. Let's um, just get on with it. I'll bring up that reference if I want to, to uh, speak about anything in particular. Okay, so uh, normally at this point, I have, I have the choice of uh, drawing it in with a small brush or a big brush and I tend to get better results with a bigger brush and I'll just move uh, stuff around when I need to. I can always go back in with a smaller brush if I'm struggling for, for any kind of detail. 
but I find this is just a great way of getting the initial uh, blocking done. And the main reason for it, the, the main reason I like it is because it's deliberately messy. So you can't, uh, you can't be too precious with it and you're always okay making changes if you do it this way. If you go in with a detailed line drawing, let's say I start drawing his hand, I'd instantly be locked into that detail and then uh, if I needed to move the arm, I would struggle. I always find that the start of a painting the hardest. This is the bit I struggle with. Um, and this is the bit I, I could probably do with um, creating a lot of studies um, really quickly and ignoring the detailed side of it. See, I'm just trying to use negative space and um, mark up areas that I can see that align with each other. So the negative space between the two characters. So if I bring the image back up, um, the negative space uh, here is really important. And it's kind of easy to, to work that shape out. And the same goes for here. Uh, creating that shape is really useful. Same over here, this shape here is really useful to find. And then that naturally creates the shape of the, um, the globe. Uh, and you can just keep doing that around the, the composition. So this shape here is really important. Um, and if you start to plot those in, um, you start to end up with, um, you start to plot the, the composition out. You start to work out where things are right and where they're wrong. And um, you know, the more you can do that, uh, the better really. Uh, as I always do, I've drawn over the image. So I'm actually gonna lock that and I can't do that anymore. I find I always get this, this bit wrong, but then the more you do it, um, and the more you work through the image, the more landmarks you have to compare against. So if you're not comparing one object against another, then uh, you're gonna have a, a, a tough old time. And this is just one way to work, definitely not the the only way. Uh, if this doesn't work for you, then then that's okay. Uh, find a process that, that does. That's, that's kind of the point. Sometimes it depends on my mood. Um, this process doesn't always work for me, to be honest with you. Um, I'm doubting it today. I always find as well with studies, um, something to consider is um, it's okay if they go wrong. It's not a portfolio piece. It's not um, a piece that you're going to show anyone, not like what I'm doing now, which is adding a little bit of stress. Um, you're just doing it for yourself. Right, so I'm going to um, draw in some line work just to make sure that it's kind of accurate because at the minute it's feeling, uh, it's feeling off. So I'm trying to, just trying to work out what I can do to fix it. There are areas in this painting, like the hat. I didn't even notice there was a hat there. Um, it's in shadow. So I'll I'll try to follow the value ranges that the artist has set and then maybe adjust them as I, as I progress. If I want that hat to stand out a little bit more, I can. Now, this is um, where I've just got to. You can start to take measuring points, right? So start to draw lines to see how things line up. So um, one of them I just spotted, the hat here lines up with the kind of the edge of his head. So that's probably worth noting for my own piece. Um, the angle between the two knees is worth noting. They're not in line. A lot of amateur artists would try to do this. Draw the second knee in line. Um, they're not, one is set back. So look for that measurement line. Um, these two hands line up with each other. So that's useful. The area I was using earlier on was this. So that shape there, I think is a an easy marker. Everyone should be able to draw that shape relatively accurately. Um, so use it in your drawing. 
whereas this whole chair is a little bit more confusing. Okay, so I've kind of got a basic sketch. It's, it's okay, it's not great. I'm gonna use this um, background color to get that kind of green shade in. So I'm gonna want uh, more saturation. So it's around there. And the great thing about Photoshop, I mean, you can just use sliders. If you wanna try and color pick it, that is beneficial. And again, if you're focusing on color for your uh, learning, then don't use sliders at all. Try to do it all with the uh, color selection over here. So I'm gonna to try to do that. Now, when looking at the color, you need to think about hue, you need to think about saturation, and you need to think about the value. So how light and dark it is, what color it actually is. Is it blue, green, yellow? And then how saturated, so how much, how much gray, uh, how much strong pigment is in it. So it's quite desaturated. I know that green is desaturated. So it's gonna be on that left side. So if I, if I make it actually square, it's gonna be on this left side. And the green is almost, um, it's like, it's hard, it's, it's hard to grab. It's almost a bluey green. Um, so let's grab something I think it could be kind of close to and I think it's probably yellower than this, but I'll put that in. So that's the kind of base, I think maybe a little bit less saturated and a little bit yellower. Yeah, that's not too bad, a little bit saturated. And if you start to think this way, what I've ended up with there, I think is kind of okay. Um, you can tell I was, I was thinking in a linear stage, have I got the hue correct? Is it more blue? Is it more yellow? Because it's not just green. Um, am I, uh, getting the value correct. So is it too light? Is it too dark? So I'm going to do the one above it now and I think it's probably a similar hue. It's just darker and it is way more saturated. So I'm going to throw that in there like this. Now I've got green. It's a little bit too green. It is more of a blue, bluey kind of green. This one up here. That's a bit too blue maybe. Somewhere around there. That's not a bad start. Right, okay. Um, cool, so I'm gonna try and get the um, foreground elements in and then I've, I've got something to work from, as well as the kind of browns. I think the browns are kind of important. I might go for those first. And they're quite a desaturated brown. Um, something around there is not, not bad. Now when you're blocking in detail like this, um, you want to do it as a big picture. So when you zoom out, how is it kind of looking? Uh, you don't really want to be zooming in and adding tons of detail where it's just not needed. Now you can see I'm not being precious at all with the uh, line drawing underneath. I'm, ha I'm happy to just paint over it because it is just a guide. And while you're working on these, if you're just not sure what you're doing, uh, stop and just think about uh, what you're trying to achieve, what you need to add next. If you just don't know what you need to add next, then um, anything you do will kind of be negative, really, because uh, you can make a change and you can end up with a great result, but if you don't know how you got there, then it's useless. As study, it's useless. Now the great thing about um, using oil paintings as reference, the artist would have created certain colors, especially old paintings where pigment was expensive. They would have mixed certain colors and then just kept using those colors. Um, so you, you start to see unison. And I found that in, in this painting already, the face feels like very similar um, hue and saturation to the bookcase on that left hand side so I can start to color pick over here and start to include those um, values and uh, that 
that leads to unison in the painting. So take that to your own personal work. Um, if you've used a color somewhere, use it elsewhere. I mean, it worked for the masters. And the hand again is a is a dark brown for the most part, and then it's getting these kind of pops of saturation in the knuckles, uh, just to represent that form. Use sparingly. So again, the value control in those areas. I would probably, if I was doing this as a as a personal piece, I would make that hand a lot brighter. Uh, so this is really great to study to understand. Okay, they've you know they've used. Um, color so sparingly and they've used saturation and, and value so sparingly that's why it creates such a strong image that hand um, you, you'd feel like you'd want to make that a lot brighter biggest thing you need to learn, uh, the bit, well, the biggest issue I had and the biggest thing I've learned is that you constantly need to think about uh, what you're doing and why. Yeah, and the main, the main reason for that is because you, you end up kind of uh, daydreaming through pieces, at least I, I do. Um, if I find I'm not concentrating, that's when all the errors start to come through. So you can start off with great value ranges and then lose them. So the paper on the desk is interesting. It looks almost like a similar color being used for the wall, but it's uh, just darker version. Somewhere around there, maybe. Goes back to what I was saying before, the more you plot in, uh, the more points you have as reference to, to make sure it's accurate and I feel like when you start to get things blocked in and it starts to go correctly um, you start to get more and more confirmation of yeah that lines up with that that works with that if you start to notice um, things just don't line up at all then something major went wrong and you, you've got to go back and change it like I said, accuracy for me is not important with this piece, but you don't want to develop habits where you're inaccurate a lot. So you can see as I've, as I've started to develop this, uh, I've started pushing the canvas around uh, more and more. Now, again, yeah, I mean, that just, it just shows the area I need to improve, which is that initial uh, block out accuracy, which I'm currently missing. And uh, I'll need to kind of devise some, some studies, ideas of how, of how, how to develop that. Uh, in the best best way possible, really, because this um, 
it's a great study and so far I found it useful whereas it's not it's not solved that problem so the problem of me uh, getting results quicker it's it's not been great for that uh, because that wasn't the focus the focus was trying to understand uh, how values were used how color was used and so far I found that really uh, really interesting with this painting one great thing that uh, obviously I was already aware of but it's kind of highlighted is how colors and values interact with each other depending what they're next to they're all relative so the uh, greeny kind of yellow color um, that I'm working on here now um, is much darker than the background color it looks as light but it's not and it's because it's surrounded by black um, or is close to black as, as, as it's been pushed um, so it's having that understanding uh, and constantly developing it um, I, I was already aware of it but it, it hasn't hurt to to learn how another artist has used it one thing that I have learned with this painting which has been really interesting is just how often the same colours uh, keep cropping up same values keep cropping up and uh, which makes sense for a traditional artist doesn't it like I said they would have used uh, the same colours kind of over and over Something interesting here, the bottom of the chair, um, the, the chair the, the right guy's sitting on, the cushion is lighter and uh, you might just think that's an accident but I imagine it's not because what it does, uh, it separates his clothing from an area that is overwhelmingly in shadow, which I find um, really interesting. That's a great way of, of breaking that, that form out of the coat away from the chair is by adding in a slightly lighter cushion. Okay, so I've blocked in the face, um, it's okay, it's not particularly accurate, but uh, I felt like an area just needed to be refined just so I started to feel better about the piece um, in general really, it was starting to reach a point where I was like, should I, should I give up, should I stop? Uh, so sometimes just a little win, work on something, refine it a little bit more, uh, it's just, it's worth doing if you find yourself getting a bit annoyed. Um, so you probably just saw me speed through that because I wasn't really talking. I forgot that this was a video. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's been quite a hard piece, this actually. Um, partially because I've been talking. I do find when I start, uh, start talking about my process and what I'm doing, uh, the piece I'm producing is, it tends to be worse. It, it's, it's pretty hard to concentrate. Uh, on a painting and try to explain what you're doing. Something I definitely want to uh, improve. Um, yes, yeah, so I've kind of got him, him blocked in a little bit more. He's not perfect. Uh, I might come back to him. Let's say we're probably 
We're over the hour mark now with me working on this. Yeah, just to look at what I need to change. The head here um, is definitely too short, so I think it needs to be longer um, and potentially thinner. So that's one area I need to change. This area here on the original, it comes out wider to about here and then cuts in. So that's like that. I'm not allowing enough room there. So that's that means either his placement is wrong um, maybe it's just the head width and size. So let's maybe copy and paste him, shrink his head down and maybe elongate it a little bit. And then zoom out. Yeah, that definitely is starting to feel better. There's some weirdness going on with the, um, the neck area on mine, so I need to fix that. So this area here needs to go in, and then the shirt needs to go like that. And again, I'll probably zoom in and, and work on him a little bit more um, to get that looking better pretty soon he does the back of his head looks really weird at the minute so yeah I'll probably work on him a little bit more and I work on the hands they're kind of the main things I want to get finished the rest of it can stay pretty loose I'm not too worried about the rest of it um, I'll get the bookcases in and I'll get some refinement in and I'll I'll start to connect them so making sure the values um, here like next to the characters are correct so these values here this value here these here around the characters um, is going to be really important for value control so I'm going to work on that and I'm just going to refine the hat and the legs um, bottom left I'm probably not even going to paint in the books I don't need them just going to leave that uh, black I think same with the chair down here um, I'll, I'll suggest it but most of it I won't put in uh, I'll get the picture framing because it does frame this character here and then I'll just work on the characters and really bring them um, forward. With my lighting, with my Cintiq currently, I'm really struggling to see these dark values. So um, God knows what this looks like on your screen. But uh, let's yeah carry on and um, see, see how we get on. I think one process that I really like um, working on with these kind of studies, and especially nearer the end, is I can essentially cheat theory. I mean, it's not cheating, but in digital you can cheat. In a sense that I can establish the basic forms and then kind of hue shift uh, around to, to add detail. And I'm almost at that point now where I can start doing that, which is really cool. It's like, I think my favorite part of the process and it's what so it takes your artwork to the kind of next level. And what I mean by hue shifting is essentially grabbing, uh, color picking an image out of uh, your current composition and then slightly adjusting the hue, slightly adjusting the value and then start laying that down for more detail. And um, that can work really well to add, add visual um, interest and complexity in a design without really having to do too much. Like I said, I'm almost at that point. It's where I'd normally start to bring in a little bit more saturation, but this piece is really quite desaturated, which I'd like to keep. I think uh, one thing to talk about, I, I took a break um, for a little bit of time and that's really good, I think. Um, don't don't feel like you have to just sit and, and, and grind it out. I felt like I needed just to clear my, my mind a little bit, um, just to 
you know, about a 10, 15 minute break, something like that, grab a drink. Just make sure you're still concentrating fully. I usually find um, if I wasn't talking and potentially not recording, I would have got to this stage probably after about maybe 45 minutes to an hour, something like that. Um, and it's here where I would start to slow down. So uh, this part of the process, you're gonna see the least amount of change, but it's gonna take the longest amount of time to make those changes. And it's because you're uh, finalizing design, really, you're adding more detail. And it is often overlooked. It's the, it's the process that I would say junior artists or Artists maybe with less experience, they kind of speed through and they, they reach a point where they're just not sure what they need to do next, so they just stop. Um, but it's the next level that uh, really does step it up a gear, I would say. Um, not to say that it's maybe the most important step, because I don't think it is. I think the, the early stages are definitely um, the important, important parts. And I think that's why I want to focus on improving those areas and the speed of those areas at the beginning is because if you if you can become competent very quickly so uh, the kind of artist that can throw down a few shapes and end up with something that looks good and um, that's such a great skill to have as an artist it takes the pressure off if you can produce something in 10-15 minutes that looks pretty good um, it will obviously be quick and it will be um, it won't be detailed but if it looks pretty good, then uh, you're onto a bit of a winner. It takes that pressure away, especially in a studio environment. I think I mentioned this earlier on as well. Um, if you fail with a study, uh, that's that's fine. If anything, it's, it's a positive. It shows that you are challenging yourself. I think if you if you achieve what you wanted to achieve every time. Um, your goals probably aren't big enough because uh, you need to fail I think to learn this is the best way of learning if you get something wrong it is definitely the best way to improve and I've been there um, and I'm, I still still go through it I still have pieces I still have studies that I just don't like uh, and the good thing is, is that they are studies. Remember that they're not portfolio pieces. So if you don't get annoyed that they failed, um, try to view it as a positive. I know that's not always easy, but if you can view it as a positive, that would be uh, the healthiest thing to do, I would say. And just know that, uh, give yourself a pat on the back and say, well, I pushed myself and that's the area I need to improve. Don't just ignore it and say, oh, well, it's not my fault I failed. Um, because it, it, what it does is it, it shows you your weakness as an artist. So um, finding that weakness is great. If you can find that weakness and then work on it, then that's good. See these books in the background, they're green. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence. They are green because the walls are green and it's a limited palette. I think one thing I do at the end of paintings, uh, which I find really satisfying is um, just go through and pull out any highlights or push any shadows just to take the piece to completion, um, just to give it that final push, the final polish. Um, but you can't do that too early. So don't chase that right at the start. The the final polish, that final level of refinement that you see in artist work that you love comes at the end. It doesn't come at the start. I know with the, the time frame I've kind of given myself, this piece isn't going to be perfect, it's not going to be finished, but 
you need to know when to stop. So uh, remember that this isn't about creating beautiful images, it's about learning. And how much more can I do before I stop learning? Now, if you're trying to learn how to do the refinement stage, then yeah, just keep going. But if you're learning how to block out an image, uh, you would have stopped before I have now. So it really does depend on what you're trying to learn. Don't don't get sucked into the, I need to create studies for Instagram. I need to create this for a purpose, for people to see it. Um, you, you don't. It doesn't need to be seen. I'm talking about time as well. I mean, have realistic expectations of what you're going to achieve in the time frame. Uh, I know this is digital, which is obviously a lot easier than uh, an oil painting. Uh, but this painting would have taken quite a while. So uh, I wouldn't expect to get the same level of refinement. Something really nice here with that background where the light is catching. Uh, the frame here lightens up and becomes a little bit more saturated, which is really cool. So adding that in instantly makes it feel uh, a little bit more alive and it gives context to that shadow. So the shadow in the background, this photo frame is, is quite useful for that, um, which is really cool. And the same thing goes, I've got this kind of um, green, it's a little bit darker, I think here, like this maybe. And then it really darkens around there, so maybe it's something like that. Which again, is, is, is pretty cool, uh, the way that works. It just add, it makes the lighting feel more realistic. Your brain instantly makes that connection that this is lights hitting that surface. Whereas if that photo frame wasn't there and it was just light behind him, it almost looks like a graphic decision. Uh, sometimes your brain can go, oh, what's what's going on there then? Why is that? Why is there a sudden light green cutting across? But if you reinforce it with these lighter values. So again, this section I'm, I'm painting in here is the same as the above, but it's going a little bit lighter, a little bit more saturated because it's not sitting in shadow, like that. I haven't really spoke much about composition, but it's really interesting with this piece, the framing, uh, the guy's head is sitting on top of the photo frame, but it's not near the edges, It's it's taking over quite a chunk of that frame and that's really important. Uh, you don't want a tangent, it looking like one's in front of um, the other one. It's not, you want it to look uh, deliberate. So, I mean, obviously we don't know what the original shot looks like when this was created, um, but you would have guaranteed that that placement of this frame was not an accident. If it was there in the first place, it might not have even been there. I've been doing this um, throughout, well, for the last maybe half hour, um, but I'm deliberately roughing up some edges uh, to create some softer, softer edges um, that I can then throw some harder ones in if I need to. So around his coat, as an example, I've kind of softened that edge and it's to uh, make it look like he's part of the environment more than anything else. Um, and his form, the shoulder has curve, right? So his shoulders curve round. If I did it absolutely arrow straight, uh, that is a style, and you know you can you can do that if you want. Um, but if I do it really straight, it could look a bit like a cardboard cutout. Whereas if you soften an edge, like I'm doing here, like that there around the edge of the coat, if you soften that edge and blend it in a little bit, it'll feel a little bit more realistic because. Uh, that's kind of how it works in real life, especially in low low light situations. Uh, a darker value against a darker value will kind of disappear slightly. And uh, in the higher contrast areas you can sharpen it up if you want to. But it's quite nice to do a, a bit of both.
Right, I think we're almost there. Um, it's kind of nearing completion now. And it's about right for the two hour time as well. So pretty much been on track with that. I do recommend if you are going to uh, work on studies, time yourself. I think it's really, uh, it's a good process to do it. Maybe not in a stressful way, so don't don't feel like you have to achieve something in, let's say, a two hour period. But just uh, keep an eye on how long things are taking you. I think one thing I haven't really mentioned um, that hopefully you've you've picked up on is how far zoomed out I was for most of the painting. I'm zooming in now for these details uh, and I zoomed in for the head uh, but for the most part I kept, I kept a distance One thing you can do when you've finished a study is uh, lay the original over the top and just see where you went wrong. I'm going to save myself the embarrassment and I'm not going to do that today because um, I imagine it's a long way out in a lot of areas. So how does that look? Still, maybe still a little bit light and still a little bit thin um, here. Might need to thicken up a little bit. Don't want him to completely skip leg day, so. Looks like a, quite a fit young chap. Don't want mega skinny legs. Okay, um, so we're going to finish there. Hopefully that was useful and it gave you a little bit of an insight into uh, creating a study, thinking about um, how I created it and the reasons I created it and what I'm thinking about. Now obviously this doesn't apply to every single study you'll ever do. There are different processes, there are different ways to do it. Hopefully I've covered the basic principle that you should be considering. Like I said at the very start, I do have a Discord now where you can talk to other artists, share your work, and I'll give feedback essentially when I've got time. I'm going to try to do it more and more. And if you want to work on this study, I'm going to add a link to the image in the chat and uh, have a go yourself. See how you get on. Let me know how you get on in either in the comments on here or in the Discord. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, it will really help. And I will see you in the next video.